I'd like to call the Post Falls Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. Would you please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Again, welcome to the February 13th regular meeting of the Post Falls Planning and Zoning Commission. Again, I ask you that if you do have a cell phone to please put it on silent or on airplane mode. And with that, we'll uh, go ahead and roll call. Stephenson. Here. Carrie. Here. Kimball. Present. Davis. Here. Latham. Here. Bishop. Here. Hampy. Here. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> any amendments this evening to the agenda? There is none. Okay, seeing none, do we have any ceremonies, appointments, announcements, and or presentations? None. Okay. That would bring us to declaration of conflict. Any declaration to? No. Nope. Make known? No. Okay. None, to none. none said. <coughs> we will go ahead and move into the consent calendar. Mr. Manley, I believe you wanted to go over these. Yeah, item A is the minutes from the January 9th, 2018 meeting. Item B is the special meeting minutes from the January 12th, 2018. Item C is the Plaza 41 zone change and special use permit file number ZC-17-05 and SUP-17-01 findings of facts. Item D is the Tullamore North zone change file number ZC-17-06 findings of facts. And item E is the Tullamore North, I mean Tullamore Seventh Edition subdivision file S-17-10 findings of facts. All right, having gone through, if you've had a chance to take a look at it, I would entertain a motion. Um, I move to approve the consent calendar as presented. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Call for vote. <coughs> Ampy. Yes. Bishop. Yes. Latham. Yes. Davis. Yes. Kimball. Abstain. Carey. Yes. Stephenson. Yes. All right, so moved. <clears throat> Brings us to item eight tonight on the agenda, and that is citizen issues. Again, this section is reserved for citizens wishing to address the commission on issues that are not on tonight's agenda. And comments that are uh, planned for future meeting agendas should also be held for that. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak on items not on the agenda? Okay, none being seen, we will move on. We have no unfinished or old business, correct? There is none. Which brings us to the meat of the meeting this evening, and that is our public hearings. So again, if you wish to speak or if you wish to submit uh, a testimony, make sure that you fill that out and turn it in up front. That being said, we'll go ahead and open Maplewood Villa Subdivision file number S-17-11, Tavis to present. Good evening, Commission members. Tavis Schmidt, Associate Planner with the City of Post Falls. Um, <clears throat> this evening, I'm going to be presenting the Maplewood Villas subdivision, case file S-17-11. Um, the applicant for this proposal is Lake City Engineering, and the owner is Big Creek Land Company, LLC. Um, the requested action this evening is the Planning and Zoning Commission's being asked to review the subdivision request and make a recommendation of approval to the City Council along with appropriate conditions, if necessary. Um, this map shows the project location. It's highlighted in red here. Um, it is, um, so we've got Highway 41 at the north end here. We've got uh, I-90 in this way, Celtis. Here, and then this is Ross Point Road right here. Um, so most of this land around here is in the city, um, th but this area right here is still within Kootenai County's jurisdiction there. Um, and then we're gonna try something this evening, if this works. <coughs> trying to go to 
using Google Earth here just to kind of show the pr project site um, is right here outlined in red. So we've got um, Ross, Ross Point Road heading south from Celtis, I-90, 41 there. And this just kind of gives an aerial and oblique angle and a view of um, what this kind of the surrounding <coughs> area um, looks like. And then if I slowly kind of rotate it here, we can see that we've got, you know, commercial and some industrial type uses along Celtis Corridor, um, and then some s lighter commercial uses to the south, and then we've got some high density residential along and this area here with some duplexes and apartments, and then along 2nd Avenue, we've got a lot of triplexes, duplexes, and uh, fourplexes there, and then that transitions as we head south into more single family residential. Um, immediately to the east of the project site is a county um, mobile home park, and the county actually has that property zoned high density residential. Um, so, just thought that would be an interesting aspect here. Let me go back. <coughs> so, moving along here, uh, the project's located at the northeast corner of South Ross Point Road and East Maplewood Avenue. It's a little over seven acres in size. Uh, currently, it's vacant. Um, there's no <coughs> significant topology or vegetation on site. And the water and sewer will be provided by the city of Post Falls. Um, this shows the surrounding zoning in the area. So the bright, bright yellow is R1, which is a single family residential zoning. Um, and then we've got some kind of slightly darker um, yellow along here, and that's R2 which is a medium density multifamily residential. And then this um, kind of more orangey yellow is R3, which is a high density residential. Um, the red is uh, community commercial services. It's primarily a commercial use zone. It does allow for some high density residential. And then this brown on the very west end of the, of the map is um, a mobile home park zoning. The white is um, just county, county pockets. Um, and or the, the like I-90 corridor. <clears throat> so regarding the subdivision, the, um, it's proposed for 26 medium density multifamily residential lots at the R2 zoning. The average lot size is um, just a little less than 8,000 square feet. And it works out to be a density of about 7.3 units per acre. They are proposing some new internal streets, um, tentatively named Acer Loop. Uh, in there, and I'll show that the proposed subdivision layout, and then some the access will be directly from from Ross Point Road, and then a secondary access from Maplewood Avenue. None of the lots will have direct access to either Ross Point Road or Maplewood Avenue. They're all going to directly the drives will be to that Acer Loop, um, but the the subdivision has access there. Um, I am going to at this point go to. camera here <clears throat> I just wanted to get the um, we have a, a, a table of, of permitted uses our uh, bulk placement uses within the municipal code um, so what we're looking at here is in the R2 zones we got right here the SF is for single-family DPX is for duplex other multifamily would be triplexes and above so triplexes um, town uh, townhomes, apartments, or anything like that, and then the TWH is a twin home, which has, is a, another housing uh, style there. So going along, the height, maximum height for all of those uses in the R2 is the same. Setbacks are essentially the same, one little exception there. Um, but kind of the, the <coughs> meat of it is over here. This is the minimum lot area that's required per dwelling unit, depending on what product you're going to build on the site. So if you're going to do single family, Single family is 6,500 square feet, minimum lot size for a single family unit. A duplex is 3,600 per unit, so times two, 7,200 square feet. There's the minimum lot size. And then other multifamily would be 3,000 square feet, minimum lot size per unit. So if you have a triplex, you need 9,000 and so on. Um, I just thought that that was pertinent to, <clears throat> to this here, showing that within the R2 zone, um, there they have they're allowed to do any of these uses as established by the municipal code. I'm um, continuing on with uh, my presentation here. Um, this is the subdivision plan. 
as proposed here. There's a lot of um, extra information on it, such as like utility lines and, and the sewer and stuff. But you can see that um, this would be uh, South Ross Point Road going here. And this is Maplewood at the, the bottom or the south end of the project. Uh, the primary access would be right in this area <coughs> yeah, pr across from First Avenue, and that will be a little First Avenue stub. And then they've got this Acer loop going around. Um, the fire department w had a requested a secondary access. So this is a kind of a secondary access to Maplewood that is uh, really just for emergency vehicle access only um, there. So staff looked at this in regards with the comprehensive plan and found that the proposed subdivision meets the policies and goals within the Post Falls comprehensive plan. Um, <clears throat> Title 17 of the Post Falls Municipal Code, all subdivisions are reviewed based on that. So the Title 17 Post Falls Municipal Code kind of sets like the rules and the regulations for establishing subdivisions. And within that, there are six criteria that um, staff and, um, and the Planning Commission have to look at to rev uh, upon reviewing subdivisions. And we, um, we look at each of those, and if, it's, if it meets those criteria, then um, the, the subdivision can be approved. If there's something that didn't, like we couldn't provide water, then we couldn't do a subdivision because water couldn't be provided to the residents there. So I'm going to go over those six criteria uh, uh, pretty quickly here. But so the first one is just it's talking about water system and that water can be provided to the proposed subdivision. There's adequate supply, quantity, quality right there. Um, City of Post Falls is the utility provider and at this time there is adequate supply and quantity to, pro to provide water to the proposed subdivision. Um, the second criteria is regarding sewage, uh, the wastewater treatment <clears throat> and that the waste can be handled in the proposed subdivision. Um, similarly, the City of Post Falls is the utility <coughs> provider for that, and currently there's adequate capacity to provide sewage or wastewater uh, to the subdivision, and the, the layout is adequate and meets the city's needs for uh, this, the wastewater system. <coughs> the third criteria is regarding the streets and the street network, and that the proposed streets are consistent with the transportation element of the comprehensive plan. Um, and staff found that the roadway alignment and cross sections are appropriate and meet the city standards. Um, I apologize, there's an error here, but I suppose the no direct access from subdivision lots is supposed to say Maplewood and Ross Point Road there. Um, the layout accommodates connectivity <coughs> there. Um, the fourth criteria is regarding soil, topography, kind of the natural features that, um, the, of the land there. And that if anything's hazardous or um, significant topography has been identified on site that would prohibit the subdivision from being developed. Um, and there's been no soil or top topographical conditions identified um, as presenting hazards. <coughs> the fifth <coughs> criteria is that the proposed subdivision is in an area that's zoned for subdivisions and zoned for the proposed use. <coughs> um, it is zoned R2, which is titled the medium density multifamily residential. Um, at, however, as I showed on the, the table earlier, it, <coughs> it can be single family uses and it can be apartments and things like that. Um, all of the lots meet and or exceed the minimum lot standards and the project meets the uh, density requirements as established in the municipal code. The sixth and final criteria is that is basically <coughs> stating that that this subdivision should not create an undue burden <coughs> on the existing neighborhood <coughs> and, and the city infrastructure and that this um, subdivision and the new homes being built here can um, can provide financial means to mitigate any impacts for their for the proposal. Um, and the city handles that through annexation fees and impact fees that are placed upon the building permits. And those are paid at time of building permit issuance. And so, so that's how this criteria is met. Um, <clears throat> in processing uh, proposals and projects, staff sends out um, notification to adjacent jurisdictions and um, governmental and quasi-governmental agencies such as the school district, Post Falls Sanitation, um, Kootenai County, things like that, and uh, Kootenai County Fire and Rescue, and we solicit comments and we, we give them a comment period 
And um, at this time, no comments were received from any of those agencies. Um, so that's my presentation uh, of the staff report. Uh, do you have any comments or questions of me at this time? Questions, Tavis? No. No. Nope. No. No. Thank you, sir. Applicant. <laughs> Good evening, Chairman Davis, Commissioners, Drew Dittman, Lake City Engineering, for the record. Thank you, Tavis, for your presentation. Uh, here tonight representing the Big Creek Land Company, uh, Maplewood Villas. My presentation is somewhat similar to Tavis's, so I might go through it a little quicker because he's already covered a lot of it. Here's the subject property located at the intersection of Ross Point Road, Maplewood Avenue, um, near the Highway 41, Celtis I-90 intersection. Uh, zoning map. The property is zoned R2. I was in front of you guys a few months ago uh, requesting zoning of this property. Uh, you guys approved it with an R2 zone. There's R2 zoning to the north, R3 zoning to the north, uh, R1 zoning to the west, and as Tavis had described, there's the high density residential property in the county to the east. Uh, and then the property to the south is also in the county and that's zoned ag sub. Uh, here's uh, the same subdivision that Tavis had put up there. Uh, again, R2 zoning, it's about seven acres. We've got 26 lots. As Tavis described in the R2 zone, you're allowed a variety of housing types on those lots, uh, anywhere from single family residences, duplexes, townhomes, triplexes, uh, even apartments. Uh, we're not proposing apartments, but uh, it's allowed in the R2 zone. Um, this project is actually proposed to be duplexes, and I've got some examples of some similar product uh, that we've built recently that I'll show you here in a minute. Um, Maplewood Avenue, Ross Point Road are both major collectors, so there shouldn't be any traffic concerns uh, from 26 lots. Those roads are designed to handle high volumes of traffic, obviously, uh, located in close proximity to Celtis Way, I-90, Highway 41. So traffic concerns shouldn't be an issue. Um, the access you see, the secondary access you see down in this corner down here, as Tavis had described, working with um, the fire marshal and working with staff, the, the fire department had requested an emergency secondary access, and so that's what that is. Um, it will be either gated off or have bollards on it so that no direct access onto Maplewood will be allowed. It'll be emergency use only. Uh, one of the conditions, I believe, is the HOA will be required to maintain that snow plow, et cetera, so that it is safe for emergency vehicle travel. Um, Minimum lot size, we've got 7,200 square feet as our minimum lot size, and Tavis went through that table, which outlines the, the variety of sizes needed for, for the use. 7,200 allows us to do duplexes. That's our smallest lot. I think our biggest lot's 11,000 square feet, if I'm not mistaken. So a little bit of range in, in size of lots. Um, these are just examples, and I'll let you take a look at these, of, of the product that we intend to build. This is a project I think we did down in the Tri-Cities last year. Uh, but it's the same same building elevation, same product, uh, duplex product. They're a little unique in that they don't look you're not your typical duplex. The left and the right side don't really match. Kind of mix it up with two story on one side, one story on the other. Kind of mixes it up a little bit. Different um, different siding materials, different color materials, obviously to give it just a little bit of of character. Any questions for me? Questions for Mr. Dick? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Public comment. Do we have any in favor? No. Any neutral? Yes. Okay. Okay, we have two individuals that are neutral that wish to speak. The first one is Savannah Casey. All right. Come on up, state your name and address, and you have four minutes. My name is Savannah Casey. I live at 4044 East Evergreen, just a few streets down from where this um, would, would be built. 
And now that I'm standing here, I need to ask you whether I actually can comment because I'm in the county side of things. Yes, yes. no, absolutely. Okay, yeah. so um, we're at the corner of Ross Point and Evergreen, and I have two considerations. One is that during school pickups and drop-offs, the use of Ross Point down by us turning on to Ponderosa is very heavy, and I don't think there's um, adequate safety for kids who walk that distance or get off buses there. So if we add, am I right, that it's lots of 36 that are duplexes, so 72 more living um, spaces in that area, I don't, I don't know whether we've taken into account the impact it'll have down the road a little bit. And the other is that my grandson attends Ponderosa. He's in fourth grade. And in his class, there are 32 kids. Have we considered the impact of additional children who will live in the neighborhood on the school? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Also neutral wishing to uh, speak is Stephen. Is it Corbridge? Correct. All right, sir. Again, just state your name and address. You have four minutes. My name is Stephen Corbridge. My address is 222 South Ross Point. Uh, I'm just right down the road. I'm right across the street from Pinehurst. Um, a few of my concerns is traffic flow. Um, I understand that the speed limit is 25 on that road, yet rarely do I see anybody going that speed limit. Usually they're going about 30, 35, sometimes even 45. Um, at all hours of the day and all hours of the night. Um, another one of my concerns that was also brought up is the congestion um, of that road. I'm concerned about um, pedestrian safety. There are no sidewalks anywhere on Ross Point until you get up to near Celtis. I feel that with this um, growth in this area, that it would be a great opportunity to add sidewalks onto that side. I also understand that the Centennial Trail is there as well. Um, so those are a couple of my concerns. Um, I'm wondering maybe if there could be a turn lane um, developed on Ross Point to a point for um, the access to this new development. I understand that on Maplewood that is just a secondary and not a primary entrance to this development as was stated in the presentations. With that understanding, I feel that a lot of the traffic flow will be on Ross Point and there will be a congestion and it will be affected throughout the community. Um, so those are my, a couple of my concerns and, and fears. Um, I think that's it. Okay. All right. Appreciate that, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, all those for, all those in neutral, those opposed. Thank you. One quick question before we jump into it. Um, in opposition, uh, Helga, do you wish to speak? Oh, okay. Helga, what's your last name? Tucker. Okay, perfect. It just wasn't marked. So we'll, we'll get to you, sir. <laughs> Sorry about that. Again, state your name, address. You have four minutes. Thank you. Helga Tucker, and I'm at 105 Southwest Wood uh, Drive. Uh, I just found out about this from my neighbors, and... I was disappointed because I don't want to see more traffic and one of the reasons I bought that house is because <clears throat> of the beautiful neighborhood and I want to keep it nice and uh, <coughs> there are older residents there and uh, it feels so safe. I don't want to change anything. That's how I feel. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, also in opposition uh, that uh, does not want, wish to speak. Uh, Cheryl Merrill says, concerned about traffic issues on Ross Point, Celtees, stoplights, and decreased value of our property. Uh, the traffic is already heavy on the road system. 
Uh, all of the following here wish to speak. So again, when you come up, just make sure that you state your name, your address, and you have four minutes. Um, I believe I've got Jim. Is it Cochins? If, a, if I butcher your name, I absolutely apologize. It's definitely not done it. Collins. Oh, Mr. Collins. Perfect. So close. I was close. Thank you. Um, I read about this today in the paper. So I'm a retired contractor. Excuse me, sir. We need your name and, name address, and address, please. Oh, Jim Collins, 357 South Kane. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And um, I'm a retired contractor. I always find it ambivalent <coughs> that developers don't actually live in the neighborhoods they develop, but a lot of us do. And my concern here. <coughs> is his opening statement was that these are major traffic venues and they will absorb the traffic. Well, I'm late tonight because I was in traffic coming here and I drove especially through that road. So I want to tell you how your neighborhood that you're building in my neighborhood that I live in is going to make my life better, not worse. I'm also concerned about my property values. I own a half million dollar home and a single family dwelling. And I don't see where saturation development, and I'm a contractor, improves our neighborhood. If I wanted to live in that neighborhood, I would have moved there. If I wanted to live in Spokane, I would have lived there. If I wanted to live in Tri-Cities, I would have lived there. But I don't want to live in Post Falls and protect the integrity of what we've got going on here. So you tell me how you're going to make my life better, not yours. And I'll be for, I'll be for this development. And I'm absolutely against it. I don't see any good coming to me as a citizen in this city by outside developer building here and right. building this type of building. I'd be all for single family housing units, all for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Ask you guys to hold your applause. Thank you. Um, I believe Bill McClure. Yes, now is your time, sir. Thank you, uh, Bill McClure, 216 South Ross Point Road. Uh, I'd like to uh, start off by echoing that gentleman's comments. I totally agree with that. I think there needs to be kind of a change of attitude within this city of Post Falls government for land grabs and just getting the almighty tax dollar revenue. With that being said, I would like to say, number one, traffic is an issue. Okay, I don't care where this uh, gentleman, where you're from, I live on that road. Okay, I'm retired. I do a lot of yard work. I'm out there every day. Nobody does 25 miles an hour. Okay, nobody. Minimum speed on that street is like 40 and up, even when it's snowing, even when it's raining. Okay, <clears throat> I just recently found out about this too. So it's a done deal. By law, I guess it's this is what you have to do. You have to listen to public comments. Okay, so with that being said, traffic is really an issue on Ross Point. And with 26 units, I think there's going to be duplexes. That's 52. Two people living in each unit. That's two cars, right? <clears throat> Four cars per tract. Okay. That's 104 cars with one ingress and one egress point on Ross Point Road across from um, First Avenue, I guess. Okay, that's a minimum of 104 cars going in and out in the morning for work and coming home after work. That's a lot of traffic in, in addition to what's already going on right now. Uh -huh. I mean, getting through that Southeast <coughs> Highway 41 light, that's crazy, you know? You got people coming down 41, trying to get on the highway or going down Celtis. It's a nightmare, okay? Second thing is, is uh, the school bus lets out right between my house and my neighbor's house, <clears throat> okay? Every day at three o'clock. There are no sidewalks on Ross Point at all, all right? I think this would be a great opportunity to install some sidewalks for the kids. Um, 
you know, even during the summertime. Sometimes it's worse because everybody's going down to, uh, you know, the park, Kiwanis Park. You know, they're going down there to play at the river or whatever, and they're just walking on the side of the road. Okay, so with the with the speed limit, uh, increased traffic. You know, it's it's just like the gentleman said. You know, how's that how's that going to make us better? You know. Um, that's all I got. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. In opposition, wishing to speak, Dean Merrill. Hi there. My name is Dean Merrill. I live at 116 Westwood Drive. Uh, Westwood is immediately off of First Street. And I see by the new plan that they got there, when you come up first to Ross Point, we're going to be right straight across <coughs> from all the people coming out of that thing. That's number one, is that there's just so much traffic on, on Ross Point. You come up First Street to Ross Point, and you sit there, and cars are coming both ways. It's really kind of a nightmare getting out of there. Once you get out of there, and you go down around Capone's to where the railroad crossing is it actually slims back the cars line clear back past Capone's trying to wait to get through that light because the railroad crossing is inside there's actually as soon as you can get past it there's actually three lanes there a left turn a straight and a straight or get on the freeway so something has to be done with that intersection before they can pile in another hundred and some cars a day right there it's just not going to work uh, you know, I moved to Pine Villa about 10 years ago. It's a nice, quiet neighborhood, but uh, I just cannot see, you know, and these guys don't live there, so they don't, you know, they're just putting their two cents in worth for the company they get paid by. But actually, there need, there's got to be something done with that road before you can start running all those traffic through there. Just come down there sometime. Get on First Street, come up to Ross Point, take a left and head toward Capone's. Try and get through that intersection there by the railroad tracks because the railroad crossing signs stick way out, so that slims it down to one lane. And if you can get through there, there's three lanes on the other side of it, but it doesn't help you. So they are lined up clear back, even clear around uh, where you can see down Ross Point all the way to Ponderosa and beyond. So traffic's a major issue. And uh, it needs to be handled before they dump all those houses in there. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Next wishing to speak in opposition, Shannon Scharf. All right. My name is Shannon Scharf. Um, my home is at 4185 Second Street. I've been there for 23 years. Um, Tavis and Maplewood paint a pretty picture up here, looking at Google down. But like everyone else here is saying, when you get in the grit of it, when you get in the guts of it, it affects. Um, currently in a one-fourth mile radius, we have five R2 properties. I'm talking about just a quarter mile radius and that's between first street and second street and that goes up to canton from canton to from canton to spencer street there's an additional five r2 properties so we're looking at 10 r2 properties in a half a mile radius uh i just like everyone else says think that's quite a bit i did talk with carrie at the school district um, and she says that at ponderosa elementary we cap at 525. Currently, that's 525 students. Currently, right now, we have 486. Uh, you guys did hear a little bit about numbers, where we have are talking about this prospect of 26 units. Looks to me like there might be four cul-de-sac situations. Uh, there's going to be 26 units times two, that's 52 rentals. Uh, we kind of averaged out 100 cars, but that's if 
there is just one single family living there. Nowadays, when a rent is increasing and we're getting up into $1,100, $1,200 rent value, you're going to run into two set families living in these. And this is just looking at it all being duplexes. That's not to say that it's going to be triplexes in the gizzards of the cul-de-sacs. Uh, so add in another 20 or so. We've already kind of talked about those numbers, but what, what I'm up here <coughs> advocating for though is something for the community, something like a church, something like a boys and girls club. Give us a roller skating rink. Investments, investments, investments. It, it doesn't stop. So I'm with everyone else. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, lastly, wishing to speak in opposition is Brett Powell. My name is Brett Powell. I live on the corner of 122 South Ross Point. I have the eye view advantage of most people here because my house is literally on the corner of that intersection. Um, as some people have talked about, <coughs> triplex versus duplex, 52 to 78 new, P new homes, 104 to 156 cars. Let's add on quad runners, side-by-sides, motorcycles, visitors. And I'll tell you what, it's a joke if you think it's not traffic there. I don't know how many times I've almost been rear-ended getting out of my driveway just with the traffic there. And it's 45 is mild. The traffic is crazy. There's no way you can do this. I mean, I just don't see it happening. Um, then you add in the bike lane. There's safety concerns, bike lane, bus route. All right. I, I don't know how many, tw at least two dozen accidents just on that corner this winter. I pulled out so many people. The, there's a fence there already destroyed from one person going through. It is a very big safety concern. You add our kids in there, there is no dollar amount to our kids. Um, the other thing, I'm a contractor too. I take care of 218 rentals, so I know what rentals bring in the neighborhood. I got great neighbors. I don't want to see this. I'd rather have homes. I'm great with homes, but bringing rentals in, there goes my property value. And it's not about the dollar. It's about the quality of life. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you. I appreciate time. it. Thank you very much, Mr. Powell. No others wishing to speak? We'll open it up for rebuttal. Right, really quick, Kaya, I'd like to ask a question of staff, if that's all right. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Rob, <clears throat> I didn't see it in the staff report specifically, um, other than with regards to traffic impact fees. Um, it, based on our current traffic master plan, is the traffic generated by this subdivision considered background and therefore nothing above and beyond what would be covered by an impact fee? Commissioner Kimball, Robert Paul's assistant city engineer. For the record, this would be considered background growth within the transportation master plan. It is what was anticipated in the development of the transportation analysis zones or census blocks as to what would be most likely in that area. Both of the adjoining roadways are classified as major collector roadways. They're intended for volumes of between five to 10,000 vehicle trips per day on them. Um, we are aware, as was mentioned, about issues up at the Saltice Way, Highway 41, Ross Point intersection. Um, if you don't mind me elaborating a little bit on, on that, um, we are aware that the Idaho Transportation Department is in the process of looking at replacing that interchange. We do not know how that's going to look, but they will be addressing some of the issues with that when they address the interchange. They have hired a consultant and are in the preliminary design phases of that with their um, budget to be construction around the year 2024. Moving more to this site here, um, we do have the Centennial Trail in that issue in this area. Um, we do need to maintain the um, road to handle that Centennial Trail and they will be providing some widening with this project along with sidewalk on their frontage improvements. The city has identified in their transportation master plan at least the one which is going before City Council next week for approval that this is one of many areas where there is missing infrastructure for pedestrians. We would like to see that 
get put in. We have very limited budgets in the city for putting in pedestrian improvements in areas where they are lacking, but we will be trying to get around to those areas and prioritizing them where the need is greatest. So it would be fair to say that potentially the impact fees from this would actually go towards something like that? No. This area does not have a project specifically identified in this area for traffic impact fee being applied to it. For pedestrians? Um, for pedestrians. Okay. We, we don't collect impact fees for pedestrian only in projects. We collect them for projects that address safety and capacity from motor vehicles. Okay. Um, we do see that with the improvements and widening that they would be doing here that we should be able to accommodate a turn pocket if if it meets the other warrants at the intersection of Maplewood Avenue and Ross Point Road. Okay, thank you. Thanks You're welcome. <clears throat> Mr. Dittman. Chairman Davis, Commissioners, again, Drew Dittman, Lake City Engineering, for the record. A uh, couple of points I want to touch on. I'd like to bring my presentation back up if I can. Um, a couple of things I want to address. The, the first is the comment was made by several people about outside developers. This isn't an outside developer. The proponents, Big Creek Land Company, born and raised in Post Falls, Idaho, they've raised their families in Post Falls, Idaho. And as a matter of fact, if one were to Google Big Creek Land Company, you'd probably find that their address is Maplewood Avenue, as they live on Maplewood Avenue, no more than three quarters <coughs> of a mile from this project. So local people, local developers, um, Enough said on that. Uh, R2 zone, the, the project is currently zoned R2. We're not asking for a zone change. It is zoned R2. What we're proposing, 26 lots, duplexes, is an outright allowed use in the R2 zone. Uh, we're not asking for any special variances or any special considerations. It's an outright allowed use uh, in that zone. We are proposing duplexes. The lots are sized for duplexes. We're not proposing apartments or triplexes or anything like that. We're proposing duplexes and that's how the lots were sized in that configuration. Uh, traffic, uh, Rob, thank you for addressing traffic. Again, I want to, if I can figure out how to do this. How do I zoom in here? So again, as has been stated, both Maplewood and Ross Point are major collectors. As part of this project, we will be improving those roads to the sections that you see up there. So we've already dedicated, with the annexation of the property, we dedicated additional right-of-way uh, on our side of the road, and we will be building those roads to 27 feet wide on our side of the street. Um, they're, the currently overall width of those roads is 26 to 30 feet, depending on where you're at. We're going to be adding 27 feet of roadway on our side. We're going to be adding sidewalks on both Maplewood and Ross Point that front our project. So we are building those roads to the major collector standard. So we're doing significant improvements. Um, Rob and I were kind of whispering back and forth. There is room at that intersection for turn lanes and, and we can work with, with Bill and Rob and staff to, to get appropriate turn lanes in there if, if they can fit. Um, that section, and correct me if I'm wrong guys, but that allows for center turn lanes through traffic and a bike lane. So it's a plenty big wide road uh, fronting the project that we will be building. Um, again, the subdivision we're proposing meets the requirements of Title 17 and Title 18. It's, it's outlined in the staff report. I think it's been outlined in Tavis's presentation as well as mine. So uh, we're asking for your approval tonight. Any questions? Any questions? No. I got one. Okay. That, <clears throat> that second entrance, just for emergency only, could that be a second entrance for the whole development itself? just to try to get some of the traffic off Ross Point? That's a good question. As it just um, it, in the configuration that it is now, it probably couldn't. It could be widened to. We'd had discussions with the fire marshal and with staff ahead of time, and everybody was comfortable with, with having just an emergency access. Uh, it's 26 lots. Um, it didn't really require or justify a, a full second access uh, onto Maplewood. Uh, we can certainly work with with Rob and Bill and the staff and see if we could we could accommodate that. But the way it's proposed now, it's it's emergency use only. Any other questions for Mr. Dittman? No. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Any other questions for staff? <clears throat> Anyone else before we close this out? Nope. We'll go ahead and close it out. Switch things up a little bit. Ray, why don't you start? Um, <clears throat> I think it's pretty straightforward uh, when it comes to the review criteria by which we have to <coughs> make a decision. Um, water and sewer are there. Streets are there. Um, they're making all the required street improvements based on the transportation master plan. They've met ingress and egress requirements for the fire department. Um, that secondary access is, is there for emergency egress. Um, in my, in my experience as an engineer tells me that trip generation, whether it's coming out onto Ross Point Road or Maplewood is all gonna go to Ross Point Road either, either direction. So one way or another, um, having a secondary access is all gonna get out onto Ross Point Road. So I think that the access point is, makes sense um, where it is. And with regards to the, the last criteria where we have to make sure that there is no undue burden put upon the city by this. Um, I think Rob put it pretty well that there's, we have impact fees, we're an impact fee city. So parks, you know, every building permit will will uh, generate money for our parks department for building parks and every building permit will generate money that uh, for our, our emergency services as well as for uh, transportation improvements to problem areas within the city based on our master plan. So it meets all the review criteria uh, for approval and so I think we should approve it. Thank you, Joe. Um. Yeah, I seem to agree to it meets all the subdivision criteria. Um, I do understand about the traffic um, issues or the worries about traffic. Um, I had it in my neighborhood too when new stuff was built in. I think we all have and everybody who comes here with a new something new development going in is worried about the traffic. But that just kind of goes along with growth and that's what Post Falls seems to be doing. Um, this parcel is going to be developed and I just feel that this is a good um, way to move into that development and, and make like a you know a buffer between the single family homes and what could be on that um, county lot uh, or that those county parcels it's what was it um, high density could be something you know big there so I think this would make a good buffer between the developments. Stephenson. Yeah I think I understand the traffic I have it in my development mm -hmm. too it's not halfway done but if they're gonna make the improvements to Ross Point and Maplewood and then whatever the Idaho Department of Transportation does, you know, the city is growing and, and whether it's now or later, this piece of land is gonna get developed some way, somehow, but it seems like the pieces are coming together, the right pieces are coming together that if it gets approved, that, you know, give it, be patient, the roads will, roads will come shortly after there, the sidewalk and Think so. Mark? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's already been annexed into the city as R2, so we can't really have issues with the duplex zoning, or I mean, d uh, duplex proposal because it's already, uh, that's probably the least um, dense of any of the R2 zones, so, so I don't have any problems with that. Um, I did I did like to see that the sidewalks are there on Maplewood and Ross Point and that is going to be put in that's part of the subdivision that's important and I, I agree with that hundred percent there's gonna be a lot more kids there a lot more families a lot more walks in the weekends or whatever it is or in the evenings and so I think that's very important um, the the secondary access I I actually agree I think that that should be a second access that just eliminate you know disseminates the traffic a little bit better but maybe you know, I'm not. I'm an architect, not an engineer. So um, maybe I stand corrected on that. But I would like to see a second access. Um, the, I think the Ross Point Road. You know, I drive that a lot, and I'm I'm around there. And there is a lot of driveways that back out into that road. Now that's a collector or arterial, and I get that mixed up. But that is problematic when you have driveways that are backing up into it, and that's hard to do. And I understand that. Um, but there is a lot of enforcement on that road too, and they really 
from what I've seen, there's there's police presence there, and they make sure that that stays at 25 the best they can. Maybe there needs to be better or not. I don't know, but um, that's um, that's that's a that's a tough thing that I think out of the scope of the subdivision here. So um, that's that's a issue. There's a lot of people that go to the park to the south there, but I don't know if this is going to make it any better or worse. So that's my comments on that. Sam. Um, I, I like the project. I think the major concerns um, really have nothing to do with this project. The speed limit, um, sidewalks are being addressed, bike lane. Yeah. Uh, the speed limit, I, that's another subject matter that maybe we address, but I don't think it has anything to do with this project. So I agree with the project overall. Nancy? I, uh, I it, it does meet the subdivision criteria, and and I think the placement of the of, of this project is is pretty good, um, considering that there is um, some high density residential on just on one side. I completely um, agree with some of these traffic issues, um, and I think we're hearing it at a lot of meetings in. In, in a lot of cases, we are hearing concerns about um, traffic, and I think that's just a byproduct of growth, and hopefully we can manage that. Um, we can begin managing that better. Um, I think an a second access would be good as well. Um, uh, it, it, it might help things, um, um, but, but overall, the the subdivision does meet the criteria, and I have a hard time um, uh, denying it for that reason. We're living in a state of growing pains. I mean, that's just the reality of it. <clears throat> the, hard, the, the thing is, the reality of it is, is that it is zoned R2, and they have a vested right, and it meets the criteria. Therefore, um, you know, we have, to, uh, we have to look at that and we have to forward a recommendation um, on to the city so or to city council so um, <clears throat> it meets the criteria and and I appreciate everyone's comments and I think a lot of those were addressed um, but the bottom line is that uh, we have a subdivision review criteria it's met it it is R2 and uh, and therefore it seems to fit so I would, at this point, be looking to entertain a motion. Chairman Davis? Yes. If I might, I'd, there's a number of folks that came out tonight, and I might want to let folks know why, how this process works and why we do things the way we do. The state law essentially tells cities, counties across the state to adopt approval criteria for any of the subdivisions, planned unit developments, special use permits. And once you adopt those standards, those are the only standards that you can consider during a public hearing. So tonight, um, folks have heard um, testimony from you know, staff and others aimed at those comments. The, the, the commission members have all essentially made comments that this meets the approval criteria or not. Really, those are the only standards under state law that we can consider. We can't consider um, speeding. That's not one of our adopted criteria. We can't consider property values. Those are not criteria that has been adopted to address how we approve subdivision. So that's the, the reason why we do things the way we do is to comply with state law. Yeah. All right. Warren, thank you. In the case of S-17-011 Maplewood Villa subdivision, I move to approve the subdivision finding that it meets the six criteria as stated in the code and with adopting conditions one through nine found in the staff report. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Yampi? Yes. Bishop? Yes. Latham? Yes. Davis? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Carey? Yes. Stephenson? Yes. Okay, motion carries public hearing. Number two, uh, B, Post Falls Senior Apartments file number SUP-17-02.
Go ahead and open that public hearing. Tavis to present. Good evening, Chairman Davis, Commissioners, <coughs> Tavis Schmidt, Associate Planner with City of Post Falls. I'm presenting the staff report for the Post Falls Senior Apartments Special Use Permit, case file SUP-17-02. <clears throat> the owner of the property is the WF Merle Trust, and the applicant is Post Falls Senior Apartments, LLC. The requested action this evening is the Planning and Zoning Commission is being asked to review a special use permit for a 64-unit multifamily development in the community commercial, the CCS zone. Uh, this proposal is outlined here in red. It's on 3rd Avenue. We have, uh, it's a little bit east of Spencer Street, so Spencer's to the west there. We've got the promenade condos uh, a little bit to the east. Um, Ross Point Road is over here. We have I-90 and Celtese Way. Um, try this again with the Google Earth. See how this, this works. Okay, so we'll, we'll fly from the previous project to the next project. <coughs> right here. Um, so, same thing. We've got the promenade condos here. Um, we've got some some apartments on the south, all along south, that are on 3rd Avenue along here. Um, <clears throat> we've got a, a mobile home park to the west. Um, this doesn't show it, but Spencer Street now connects uh, north to Celtis Way. Okay, continuing on, <clears throat> um, the project's located in approximately the 3400 block of East 3rd Avenue, east of the intersection with North Spencer Street. Um, it's just a little over six acres in size. Currently, it's vacant land and the water and sewer are to be provided by the city of Post Falls. This shows the existing zoning. The <clears throat> project site is uh, in the black uh, cross hatching there. Um, all of the red is Community Commercial Services, CCS. The bright yellow is R1, which is a single family uh, residential. Um, the, the slightly, the, we've got a couple other shades of yellow here. So we've got um, kind of the mustard color is an R2, and then the more orangey color is R3, and that's a high density multifamily residential. Um, the gray is industrial, um, as, uh, along with the, the white and the brown is a residential mobile home park. So this property uh, underneath the, the cross hatching there, it's red, showing that it's CCS zoning. And the municipal code states that within um, uh, commercial, community commercial services, in order to do residential uses, you have to get a special use permit. And um, it also states that residential uses in the CCS zone, if approved, through a special use permit can uh, develop at the R3 zoning standards, which is the high density multifamily residential standards. Um, similar to what I showed in the previous thing, um, previous presentation um, with that uh, R3 zoning allows single family, duplexes, uh, triplexes and apartments, um, kind of all, all different housing types. And the, the difference is just at the minimum lot size per, per unit with the different housing type. Um, so the applica application for a special use permit can be approved as presented, conditionally approved, or denied by the Planning and Zoning Commission tonight. And the, <clears throat> the municipal code sets the standards, and there's the following four criteria from the Post Falls Municipal Code. Uh, the first one is that implementation of the special use would or would not conform to the purposes of the applicable zoning district. So uh, under staff's review of this proposal, it found that the project will conform to the purposes of the zoning district through the issuance of a special use permit. Um, 
this site is also is adjacent to an evolving commercial corridor along Third Avenue. We've got um, a, um, some immediately to the east of this project. We've got some storage units being built. That so it'd be between this project and the Promenade Condos. Um, also, Celtis, there's some, some action along Celtis and some things that are developing further along Celtis there. So, it's, so this, this will complement future development. It is kind of along the, in the core of uh, Post Falls. It's adjacent there. The second criteria is whether the proposed use constitutes an allowable use as established for the zoning district involved. And it complies with all other laws, ordinances, and regulations within the city and state. Um, again, the proposed use is allow allowable through the issuance of a special use permit. And um, w uh, if this is approved tonight, then uh, the project would move forward and it would go into the site plan review process. And during the site plan review process, staff will review that for um, you know, utility locations, frontage of improvements, um, access to the site. And so the site plan review will ensure further compliance with uh, uh, state and local codes and laws. The third criteria is whether the proposed use will or will not com be compatible with the health, safety, and welfare of the public or with land uses in the vicinity of the proposal. Um, staff found the proposed use to be compatible with the health, safety, and welfare of the public and with the uh, adjacent land uses and land uses in the vicinity. Uh, the fourth and final criteria is whether the proposed use will or will not comply with the goals and policies found within the Post Falls Comprehensive Plan. Um, within the Post Falls Comprehensive Plan, it, it does state that permitting higher density residential use in the community commercial services zone, um, it complies with the goals and policies um, with the within the comprehensive plan. Thus, because of that, we have the special use permit process to review uh, proposals in the community commercial services zone. Um, this is a proposed site plan of the project. Um, we've got, uh, so north is, uh, would be on the left side over here. Um, so on the right side or the south is Third Avenue. So we have two access points to Third Avenue. There would be sidewalks that would be constructed um, along Third Avenue there um, and then we've got you know some the structures are basically at the perimeter with some in the middle and then we've got parking um, and traffic circulation in in on the site again we sent this out to other co other agencies soliciting comments and we received no comments on this proposal um, at this time do you have any comments from me questions I just, just out of curiosity, is the parking open parking or is that carport parking? That's, um, I can't tell by. So um, just looking at site plan review, so right along here, I would say that this is proposed to be open parking. Mm -hmm. okay. And then where you've and got these kind of dashed lines, that would be typically carports. Carport. So it looks like we've got, you know, it's so maybe 50-50 carport open, give, give or take there. So. Okay, any other questions for Tabs? Uh, Tavis, do we have a proposed density? Um, no, I, let me look here on that. Let's see if the application has that in here. No, um, the, the applicant's representative is here this evening, and she may be able to answer that more quickly than myself here, because I didn't see it in oh, I see it. I'm right. It's 10.6. Okay. It's on the application. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Nope, you're good. you're good. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Applicant. Hi. Um, my name is Sarah Breedy. I'm with ZBA Architecture, and I'm here on behalf of the um, property owner or project owner. Um, Tavis covered it pretty well. I have a, just a short little more information on the on the project. This is a rendering of um, what some of the buildings may look like. They're single-story apartments for seniors. Um, you described it pretty well. We do have open <coughs> parking and carports. Um, it's uh, we're proposing about 50 covered spaces. Um, generally uh, surface parking uh, we have a 
community club building for the tenants and a rental office and um, required landscaping. That's about it. Those are some of the elevations. <coughs> Those are single Question? fan or single story. Single story. Single story. Okay. Thank goodness. Any other questions for applicant? No. Okay. Thank you. Public comment. Mm -hmm. Do we have any four? We do. Okay. So we have one individual in favor that does wish to, wish to speak. Don Mural, would you come up? Again, it's your name and address, and you have four minutes, sir. <coughs> My name is Don Morrell, and uh, I live at 706 North Knight Street in Coeur d'Alene. And I just want to say that... Uh, my family's owned this property all the way from Capone's all the way up to Spencer, uh, over 30 acres uh, since the, the 50s and early 60s. Mm -hmm. My uncle first and then my mom and dad. And um, we just think this is a great project. It's the last of our pro family property and we're totally in favor of it. And if there's uh, anything that uh, the project needs, uh, we're there to support it in any way we can. We'd like to see it go forward. Uh, I mean, I can't think of anything better for that than uh, the senior living units. That's all I have. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> any neutral? Any opposed? Okay. Then I would say that there would be no need for rebuttal. Any rebuttal? Anything else to add? Okay. Any questions for applicant staff before we close this out? <clears throat> I don't know if I can. I, I still go back to the parking thing. Um, and I don't know if I can, if this is something I can talk or question at this point, um, but this is a senior development, senior apartments. We have a lot of snow and by my count, kind of like just counting these numbers, you wouldn't even have one park, covered parking place for each unit. I just would like to see more covered or all covered parking, especially being it's a senior development and we have, you know, our weather is pretty harsh sometimes and uh, <coughs> if you don't even have, you know, if you don't have a covered space available for you, you're going to be stuck. Okay. Now the code itself doesn't necessarily require the percentage of lots to be covered as part of a site plan review for parking. Uh, I could maybe punt to warn here as far as being a special use permit if there's parameters that you could then delve into that as part of special use permit approval. So I think I'd give the applicant a chance to speak to your concern really yeah. quick and they may have you know, something I want to say about that but flip through the code really quick and I'll speak to what John said here in just a second as they after that as they come up. Okay thank you. Applicant want to come up and share anything regarding parking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, typically with the senior complexes, we don't see every unit actually having a car. So it's a little different than with a, with a family complex where we would want to provide more covered because you'd expect two cars per um, unit. In this case, it's usually about one car if, if that. So that's typically what we see. But I still don't think you wouldn't even have enough for one car per unit. Right, and a lot of folks won't have a car at all. A lot of times we see that in the senior complexes. Okay. okay, thank you. So special use permits, you're allowed to make conditions on the approval of a special use permit that essentially allows them to meet the approval criteria or, or frankly, to make sure it blends in with the, the area and meets the needs of, of the neighborhood. So if you can, if it's a concern that the commission has and you can tie it back into an approval criteria, then you can certainly add that as a condition. But you'd need to be able to make that, that connection and tie it back in. Okay. Any other questions for applicant staff? Anyone else? No? No, no. Okay, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Mr. Latham? Oh, I get to go first. Well, you're right here. Finally. <coughs> no, uh, my, my comments are that 
first of all, se uh, senior apartments living, it's needed in Post Falls. You've got this industrial commercial to the north, but it's, but it's really separated by railroad tracks. Everything to the south is multifamily. I can't think of a better fit, and if I were to wish for CCS zoning to become multifamily, this would be the area of town where I think it needs to happen, so I'm absolutely in favor of it. I, I do, as an architect, I do think that in Idaho, you should have one covered space at a minimum for every dwelling unit, and I think that would be smart to do that because a carport doesn't cost very much, and I think that's cheap insurance for these people, even if they don't have a car, then you have a few extras. I do think that is important. And this is Post Falls. This isn't a more urban community. People do have cars whenever they possibly can. So I, I do agree with you, that is important. Absolutely. But um, I'm absolutely in favor of this. I think it's a great fit. Mr. Bishop. Well said. I agree with everything Mark said. Um, and I like the project. Okay, Nancy. I agree. Um, I, I, I'm not quite as concerned with cover parking simply because I'm sure they're going to have the parking lot maintained by someone. I'm sure the seniors aren't responsible for shoveling out their own car if they have one. So I'm not quite as concerned with that. Um, um, I, I see your point, however, but I, I like the project and I like where it's at. Right. Um, you know, specifically, it meets the criteria of the code um, and there really isn't anything that I can see in our code that requires other than just meeting the requirement for parking um, you know the 1.5 per one bedroom and then the two for a two or three bedroom <clears throat> um, and it would appear as if they've met that if they haven't they have plenty of room it's not like it's a tight side or anything <laughs> So they've got plenty of room to put it in. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they'll take our suggestions of, of adding covered parking to heart, and maybe even the residents would request that. Adding a carport is not a difficult thing to do. Yeah. Um, it's typically done after the asphalt is placed anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, that's definitely something that they can do if, if the residents request it. And I mean, other than that, it meets the requirements of the code. They've the other, and as well as the comprehensive plan. Thank you. Um, I like I like the development, and I like <clears throat> I like where it's at. Um, I think it would be great there. I do think it should have one covered parking space for every unit. Um, I agree that the you know I'm sure that the driveways and stuff will be plowed, but if you have a car sitting out and it's not under a carport, it's covered with snow and you have to uncover it. So I think that there should be a minimum of one covered parking place per unit. I, I agree. Um, I think it's a perfect, um, it's perfect for the, you know, the little area there, the special use permit, especially with the surroundings of it. I didn't even think about the parking, but I, I think that does make sense with seniors. Um, you know, but Hopefully there will be somebody that will help maintain and maybe even help seniors if you know the car does get dumped on. So, but I, I think it's a, I think it's perfect for that area right there. Yes, I mean our question that we always have to ask ourselves is, does it meet the criteria? It absolutely does. It's a good project. It's a, it's a good fit. I don't know that we would need to require um, in the motion. Uh, the covered parking, I think that the uh, individuals living there would probably cover that, um, but it's a, it's a good fit for me. So at this time, we'd look for a motion. Okay. In the case of SUP-17-02, I would move to approve a special use permit, finding that implementation of the special use will conform with the proposed, with purposes of the applicable zoning district that the proposed use constitutes an allowable special use as established by this chapter in the zoning district and complies with all other applicable laws, ordinances, regulations of the city and state, uh, finding that what the proposed use will be compatible with the health, safety, and welfare of the public and with the land uses in the vicinity of the proposal and finding that the proposal will comply with the goals and policies found within the comprehensive plan 
and adopting findings and conclusions as found in the staff report as well as conditions one through six as found in the staff report. Okay. I will second that. Okay. Moved and seconded. Stephenson? Yes. Carrie? No. Kimball? Yes. Davis? Yes. Latham? Yes. Bishop? Yes. Hampy? Yes. Okay. That brings us to public hearing C, 3rd Avenue zone change, files <coughs> ZC-17-07. Okay, we open that. Tavis to present. Uh, good evening, Chairman Davis, Commissioners. Tavis Schmidt, Associate Planner with the City of Post Falls. I'll be I'm presenting the staff report for the Third Avenue zone change, case file ZC-17-07. The owner of the property is Lamb Storage LLC, and the applicant for the proposal is Tri-State Consulting Engineers. The requested action this evening is the Planning and Zoning Commission is being asked to review the proposed zone change from Heavy Industrial, HI, to Community Commercial Services, CCS. <coughs> Um, the project is located here um, as shown in the red cross hatching. Um, it is, um, so we got the, the veneer plant on the north with Centennial Trail there. Black Bay Park is, is all of this open space in that area. Um, got Bay Street on, to the east um, and then kind of a city center of Post Falls down here with, with Spokane, the very extreme <coughs> west end there. Um, try this little again here. So we will maybe. All right. Okay. So we're going to go on down the road here. So this is showing uh, the Third Avenue zone change. We've got the Black Bay Park here, Third Avenue on the south. We've got the Post Falls um, Senior Center right here. Um, this is uh, the existing lamb storage uh, uh, site along Bay Street here. We've got the um, commercial corridor of Celtis right along uh, this area there. Okay, so continuing on here. Um, the project is located at approximately the 1100 block of East 3rd Avenue. It's between Idaho and Bay Streets. It's approximately 2.2 acres. Um, currently, it's vacant. It was a formal, formerly a mobile home park. Um, water and sewer are to be provided by the City of Post Falls. This shows the existing zoning. So um, the, we have this darker gray is some remnant zoning that's a heavy industrial zone. Um, the heavy industrial zone by the municipal code only allows um, previous uses that were on that site to be, to be done on that site. Any other new uses um, has to conform to a, an existing zone. So this is kind of an old remnant zoning that um, is mostly just along a lot of the, the former veneer property. Um, this, this property up here that was the former veneer was um, zone changed um, to R2, I believe, or no, that's R3, um, a, a year ago or so. So underneath the cross hatching, you can see the, uh, that there's uh, this dark gray. Um, we do have some, some um, light gray or what appears almost white here, um, in, like in these areas, and that is uh, the existing industrial zone that can have um, existing and new uses there that would be, be permitted. Um, um, this is the future land use so the, from the comprehensive plan. Um, so the, the yellow shows residential. Uh, it doesn't specify, the comprehensive plan uh, in the map here doesn't <coughs> specify between low density or high density residential. It just has residential. Um, the green is, is uh, parks, institutional, um, reserve lands like that. Um, the purple, the little purple square is, um, is industrial. And then the red is commercial uses. So as you can see with the uh, future land use map, um, basically both sides of Third Avenue 
from Bay Street heading west um, is intended to be commercial with the exception of the one um, industrial use and then the park, Black Bay Park. Tavis, can you tell us what that industrial, what's there on that side? Um, you know, I'm not sure. Just, um, it's right. Some kind of manufacturing company. Yeah, it's, um, I've driven past it tons of times, but it's right next to the parks, uh, the parks building there where they store their buses. Composites. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Some, yeah. Some, like composites okay. or something. Yeah. Something oh, just like that. Something like plastics. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, so the staff in the public services department reviewed this, uh, based on the zone change criteria within the post falls municipal code, uh, title 18 and, um, zoning is assigned following consideration of such items such as street classification, traffic patterns, existing and future development and land uses, any community plans, and then geographic or natural features. Um, commercial and high density residential uses and zoning is typically along, uh, assigned along streets with higher road classifications. So you wouldn't want to stick this off, off the, the side on a, on a small street in the middle of a residential neighborhood, but you want it on a, uh, you know, commercial and higher density things uh, along major or more major, uh, road classifications there. Um, limited or neighborhood commercial and lower density residential zoning is typically assigned for properties as you get farther away from the higher uh, intensity urban activity. And then industrial zoning is typically assigned for properties with sufficient access to major transportation routes and situated away from residential zoning. Um, so based on those criteria, uh, staff found th uh, this to be uh, this proposal to be consistent with the future land use map, compatible with the surrounding environment, and then compatible with the adjoining street classification. And Third Avenue is classified as a major collector street. Staff found this to be the proposal to be consistent with the goals and policies found within the comprehensive plan, and the zone change would not mater materially change the findings or recommendations of the City of Post Falls Transportation Master Plan. Again, we sent this out to solicit for comments for outside agencies, and we received no comments from any outside agencies. Um, I'm gonna, I'll leave this up, but this is the zone change review criteria from the municipal code um, there. And at this time, do you have any questions or comments? I'll stand for any of those. No Question. conditions? Um, there, no. None that staff recommends. Okay, perfect. This time to be all right, thank you so much. Applicant is ready. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the, of the commission. My name is Steve Circle. I'm with Tri-State Consulting Engineers. Address is 1859 North Lakewood Drive, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I'm here on behalf of my client, Lamb Storage, LLC. And thank you, Tavis. Um, gosh, we, we, I've reviewed all the staff reports the report and don't really have any comments. I think you did a great job. My client owns uh, Bayview Mini Storage. And in this particular location, he wants to extend that uh, use. So therefore, we got to go for a zone change to do that accordingly. So um, <coughs> I guess I would, would respectfully ask for uh, an approval tonight for the zone request that we want uh, for com community commercial services and ask if you have any questions of me, but I think it's pretty straightforward. So um, I'm here to answer anything you might have. Any questions on this? No. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Public comment for <coughs> neutral or against. Nope. None being said, no need for rebuttal. <laughs> so we'll go ahead. We'll close it out. Any comment? I'll just throw it out to anyone. No, seems to fit. Yeah. Agreed. It's kind of a no-brainer. It seems like yeah. more like housekeeping than anything else. Trying yeah. to clean up some remnant zoning from a long time ago that matches now now to match our comp plan. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, my only comment that that the CCS zoning is is a fit for it. I just um. I think that the R3 zoning would be a fit too. It's adjacent to the city park, I mean to it, to Black Bay Park, and it's adjacent to some other zoning, some older um, 55 and up housings, but, but the CCS fits also. I think both of them do. Yeah, I'd agree so, with you, Mark. Yeah, 
I can kind of see it both ways, yep. basically. Mm -hmm. I just wanted a voice that, I guess. <laughs> Duly noted. There you go. All right. Okay. Sounds like everybody's on board, so we'll entertain a motion. Um, I will move to recommend approval of ZC-17-07, 3rd Avenue zone change, uh, finding that it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and zoning code, and adopting um, <coughs> the findings, um, findings and conclusions contained in the staff report with a zoning designation of to CCS. Okay, we have a motion. A second. And a second. Okay, call for vote. Nampy? Yes. Bishop? Yes. Latham? Yes. Davis? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Gary? Yes. Stephenson? Yes. All right, that brings us to the final public hearing of the evening an annexation, Pioneer Acres. File number A-17-08. We'll go ahead and open that up, and I believe Mr. Manley is to present. Good evening, Commissioners. John Manley, Planning Manager here at the City of Post Falls. Introducing the Pioneer Acres Annexation, Case File A-17-08. The property owner is Larry Guy, with the applicant being Dorbler Engineering. The requested action is to review the annexation request, determine that the requested single-family R1 zoning designation conforms with the Post Falls Comprehensive Plan, and make a recommendation of approval for the R1 zoning designation. So with annexations, uh, our code, uh, you're not approving the annexation or making a recommendation on the annexation. We're just setting uh, forth a recommendation for zoning. The project location is as you see here in the uh, red hatched boxed area. You have Grange Avenue running east-west directly to the south. You have Guy Road that runs on the western boundary at this location running north-south. And it is just west of Spokane Street and east of Chase Road and south of Prairie. attempt to bring this into Google Earth also. Let's see, it didn't work. One more try. So when you look at this area, through a Google Earth, you can see that there is an extensive pattern of single family residential to the south. We have a developing single family residential to the east. And then if you pan over, you also have single family development going to the north of this as well. Um, the, this image doesn't show it, but to the west here, about this location, we have a Whiskey <coughs> Flats subdivision as well as we have a craftsman. And we have a development going right at this location as well as here with single family residential. So a single family residential, R1 would be compatible and consistent with the built pattern of this area. <laughs> the project size is about 10.4 acres <clears throat> the it's currently a large lot vacant land for the most part I know it says single family that's a carryover apologize for that the proposed zoning is single family R1 as stated the water provider would be East Green Acres Irrigation District with sewer being provided by the city of Post Falls we go through the zoning criteria and it's assigned following consideration of such item as street classifications, traffic patterns, existing development, future land uses, community plans, and geographic and natural features. In review of this, there would seem to be no conflict with the adjacent street classifications, traffic patterns, or the uh, development within the area. <clears throat> Looking at the zoning, you can see here, it kind of matches the discussion about the, the neighborhoods in the area. 
through Google Earth where you can see the R1 zoning designation around it. You do see the darker brown here, which is a uh, RMHP. It more or less is kind of more of a, like a legacy zone, like the previous public hearings with the heavy industrial. And then with the purple to the southwest, that's a smart code. The light purple is a single family residential smart code zone with the darker purple that you barely see here as being uh, more of your medium density. You also see it off to the north, uh, north of Prairie, some other smart code zoning. Future land use that you see in this area, you do see um, the yellow being <coughs> residential, so they're proposing yes, yellow, so proposing residential, so they're consistent there. For the other criteria is that high density zoning is typically assigned along streets with higher road classifications. Uh, that wouldn't be the case here, so the proposed lower density would meet this criteria. And limited or neighborhood commercial and lower density residential is typically assigned for properties as they proceed farther away from higher intense urban activity areas. So this obviously is not a high intense urban active area, so therefore the R1 would be consistent with that criteria. Industrial zoning, this criteria is inapplicable since uh, they're going for R1 in this case. So overall in review, we found that the proposal being of the R1 zoning district consistent with the Post Falls area city impact. It's contiguous with city limits. It's consistent with the future land use map. It's consistent with the policies found within the comprehensive plan, transportation, and wastewater reclamation master plans. The R1 zoning designation is consistent with the surrounding areas. We did send out comments and we did receive comments from the following agencies. Kootenai County, they replied with a no comment. And it could be found within your staff report. Kootenai County Fire, they're neutral to the proposed annexation and it is within their boundary. The highway district did comment on this though, that Guy Road should be annexed in with <coughs> Whiskey Flats development to Fisher Avenue. This kind of brings some complications with the proposal as you'd have to re-notice it and, and, and deal with, could potentially create an obstacle on this particular ap application. Um, they cited that the Guy Road is a gravel road approximately 18 feet wide. It's under their jurisdiction. They believe that it does not have the required improvements to safely accommodate the expected increase in traffic and should be rebuilt to current city public road standards. Now I am going to go into this comment here in the next couple slides here. And if you have any time want to have questions with uh, an engineer that's here, feel free to ask and they can come up and also comment on this. So the area we're looking at here, bound in red, and I'll proceed to the next slide. The area of concern is this, this segment to the northwest corner of the proposed annexation area, this bit right about here, where Fisher Avenue is running east-west, it's currently gravel, and they would rather see it with some improved surface. Um, right now we're dealing with an annexation, we're assigning a zone. Typically we would, pro when we process the subdivision, this is an item that can be addressed as part of subdivision approval, although it wouldn't be within the city limits, the Guy Road, in the interest of Guy Road, can be discussed at that time. I spoke with uh, Rob Paulus, Assistant City Engineer, and there is the intent to get uh, potentially a 24-foot wide hardened surface uh, on that of sorts. So if you want more details on that, like I said, he's present to talk on that matter. But the goal is, is with subdivision two, to deal with Guy Road and not um, leave the Highway District's comments for not. This here is who we noticed. At times, people are curious of when we say we notice our um, outside agencies. This is our uh, list uh, that we send out for notice to jurisdictions, and you can see uh, who's all. You can see the schools obviously get it noticed, pipelines, um, even our own Post Falls Parks and Rec, um, some Verizon Wireless, Department of Lands cable companies, urban renewal, KMPO. So it's, it's pretty extensive. So at this time, I'd stand for any questions you have for me. John, can you point out again just where that section of gravel is on Guy Road? Yep, right there. So is it the, okay. 
It's Great. longer than actual two letters. <laughs> Just that circled <laughs> section. So not the section south of there. No, no, it would be improved <clears throat> from basically from here to here. They are going to terminate access from Guy Road. It's all, I think it's already terminated. But, so you would have improvements from where it exits here to there. And so then your ways out of this subdivision would be through Whiskey Flats or to the north to Fisher. You wouldn't be able to go down Guy Road mm -hmm. to Grange. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks John. Any other questions for John? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. So we'll be brief, but I would like to touch on a few items that I think are important in your consideration of annexation. So as you can see, this is an infill annexation. And those Chairman Davis, can I interrupt Mr. Doble oh, for yeah, just a second? Right. I his name and that, address. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, I was so excited. Yeah. Hey, we're glad to have you. Just need a name and an address. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Uh, Gordon Dobler with, uh, ironically, Dobler Engineering, 3956 North 19th in Coeur d'Alene. Thank you. Good, good tip, Warren. So it's an infill annexation, and as such, there are some unique characteristics of infill annexations um, that I think are worth considering in your deliberations. Infills are typically surrounded, by definition, um, by the surrounding city. So you really have roads that are being paid for by taxpayers of Post Falls that provide access to this to these areas, uh, emergency services, public safety that in a sense are already being provided, and development, unless it's annexed into the city, would not be paying for it, but they would benefit from it. I think that's kind of the nature of the infill. And as uh, I was reviewing the staff report, there's actually one of the annexation policies that says all things being equal, infill annexation should be given priority, and I believe that's one of the reasons why. I think annexation of these infill areas allows for managed growth, which is in your comp plan, because the city controls the development. You also can require improvements to the adjacent roads to your benefit. You get uh, pedestrian connectivity with sidewalks on development. Um, and again, those are all benefits to the city. You also get the economic growth from the development. Uh, the R1 density that we're asking allows for uh, an economic base that would pay for the, the improvements and not have a burden on the city. Um, also, in this case, uh, public infrastructure is available. I think staff cited the, the um, adjacent roads. Grange on the south direct will have direct access on that southern portion and to the north guy road provides access i think while technically whiskey flats is an access uh, i don't think that would be used i think in this case when the property develops they'd be using guy road to go to fisher it's more direct larger capacity streets uh, so that the roadway classifications are compatible with the zoning i believe that we're proposing and Staying on zoning for a minute, as you saw earlier, it's surrounded by an R1. We're asking for an R1. We think that's totally appropriate. Not asking for a higher density, not a lower density. So we believe it's consistent. So we believe the annexation does provide for the orderly expansion of the city into that area as an infill. Um, just finally, I want to address a couple of the comments uh, as it as it were, we had already approached city staff on that little stretch of gravel road. Uh, I know it's really not a consideration for annexation, but let's don't turn a blind eye to what's going to happen out there. Um, certainly the, the applicant and the uh, property owner, future property owner, are sensitive to developing this and having them drive over gravel so we'd already approached the city on some kind of partnership sewer will most likely come from Fisher so we'll be into the road already uh, <clears throat> make some sense to partner with the city or have some kind of a win-win where it does get paid so we're, we're certainly open to that and in fact would prefer it in some fashion that's a win-win solution and just kind of a side note as you move forward we that we are aware of that and are eager to solve that 
So I, that would address Post Falls Highway District's comment. And then there was a comment from the bank. Um, I can't, can I point on this thing, John? Yeah, yeah here yeah. we go. So you see a little triangle that's already been annexed. Uh, that was their comment that says they really don't have access to this, which they don't. And upon development, access would come through this property to that triangle. And in fact, um, the same company that's looking at buying and developing this is also looking at buying and, and that piece and including it in the development. So it's a natural um, outcome. And that will be addressed at the subdivision stage. And that's really all I have. So I'll stand for any questions, should you have any. Questions? No. Okay. No. All right. Thank you very much. I just had one thing and verify. Yes, please. About the bank, the <coughs> bank piece, the triangular piece. That would be an item that would be addressed at the time of subdivision. We're okay. dealing with an annexation and zoning at this point, and then connectivity is done at the time of subdivision. So both of those. Okay. Okay, public comment? No. None? No. Okay. All right. Any questions for staff or applicant before we close it out? No. Nope. Going once, twice, sold. All right. I'll open it up. Anyone? Any comment? No. Okay. Well, I was going to say, I think it makes sense with the current land use and what the future is going to be, just to kind of fill in that pocket. Um, I know it's not a condition of this, but just to hear about the guy road and that other little piece, it seems like there's a plan for it after, if it can get this designation. So I think it makes sense. <coughs> Agreed. Yeah, I agree also. I think it makes sense to go ahead with it. It meets the requirements of the comprehensive plan the, and the future land use map. Um, access is a, not an annexation issue. It's a subdivision issue or future land use is issue so uh, I think it's it meets all our criteria for annexation and it should be zoned R1 I think that's the most appropriate zone okay anyone else yep makes sense to me okay all right then I'm looking for a motion I'm going to try this. I don't know. I'm not sure how to say this. Um, I move that we recommend um, to the City Council approval of this annexation with the R1 zoning designation, finding that um, it conforms to the annexation policies within Post Falls Comprehensive Plan and meets the requirements found in the zoning ordinance. Well done. Thank you. Second. <coughs> hey, moved and second. Let's call for a vote. Stephenson? Yes. Terry? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Davis? Yes. Latham? Yes. Bishop? Yes. Hamby? Yes. All right. Item number 11 on the agenda tonight is new business. Mr. Manley, do we have any new business this evening? None. Staff comments? There is none. Any commissioner comments? None. Okay. That'd we'll be adjourned. So moved.